Welcome to Masters. We have a great show planned for you today. We're talking about makeup and our youth. We're going to get into that in just a moment. Let's get this show on a roll. Yeah, that's what we do. <laughs> Welcome to Masters. Today's show is going to be a great show for you. Today we're talking about our youth and the influences within our youth, especially makeup and style and things like that. And what age is appropriate for certain things? I feel like 13 years old is the appropriate age for girls to start wearing makeup if they choose to wear makeup. I think before then, it's a little too early, you know, for a lot of stuff. Maybe a little lip gloss, a little eyeliner, you know, but the full beat, no. But with that being said, there are also a lot of young makeup artists that are on the scene now that are really, really, really good. And, uh, you know, they had to start somewhere and they probably started when they were nine, 10 years old, you know, making their faces up. So 13 for me is gonna be the, the age. My daughter is 13 and she's not into makeup, but if she was into makeup, that would be the age that, you know, I would start letting her do. Cause she does lip gloss and her little friends wear lip gloss, but full beat, no. I um mm -hmm. I agree with you. I don't I think that 13 is is way too young for a full face of makeup. Right. Mascara, lip gloss, eyeliner, um definitely not eyeshadow at that age, but I will say my 5-year-old is obsessed with makeup. She watches makeup tutorials on YouTube and she knows how to get to them and when I'm in the mirror and I'm putting on makeup, she wants something on. She wants to put on makeup. She even had this thing one day she told me when I told her she couldn't wear makeup. She said, "But I you look beautiful and I look hideous." You know, and I don't want her to grasp that concept that she's only pretty when she wears makeup. Right. So you definitely <clears throat> want your, your kids to be comfortable in their own skin and to know that they're beautiful being themselves. And so, you know, what do you think, um, Nicole, because uh, you have a daughter as well. I so do. I have, I have a six-year-old daughter. And likewise, my daughter has a, her own makeup kit that she plays in um, at home and doesn't look good at all. But <laughs> I bet it looks good she, to her. Right. You know, she thinks she's wonderful. She'll have a blue eye, a green eye. She'll have lipstick. You know, it. it the idea is there. The color she tries, she tries yeah. to blend it in and all of that. And it's, it's, it's. I mean, you know, to me, it's like, what's the difference between that and painting a picture? It's all about creative expression. Playing mm -hmm. dress up. Now again. My thing comes in with being comfortable in your own skin. When they start to think that, oh, I have to have this in order to be beautiful, or such and such wears makeup, no, that's where, you know, be comfortable with your own skin, plus makeup can break you out. You don't need all of that. You know, right. you're beautiful the way you are, and I need you to understand that first, and then as you get older, you know, because I'm not really worried. I know some people, well, young girls look older when they put makeup on, and it's confusing men. You know, to me, that's not on the girl, that's on the man. So for me, it's more of understanding that you are beautiful, being confident within yourself and understanding, you know, that the makeup is just just added value yeah. or just yeah. artistic expression. What do, you think are, what do you think are some ways that we can, um, as, as mothers of young girls who mm -hmm. are already obsessed with makeup, what do you think are ways that we can get them to understand you don't need this? I mean, first you gotta talk to them. That's the, mm -hmm. that's the main thing. That's what I do. I, I talk to my daughter. She sees she sees me wearing makeup. Usually, she only sees me wearing makeup when I have something to do that dealing with being on camera. Because honestly, that's the only time when you, when you have to work in the media and put makeup on when you're in your regular everyday clothes. You don't feel like doing it. Right. It's a process. Right. Mm -hmm. And so um, I talk to her. I let her know. You know, I don't I don't wear that every day. Um, I have my thing is my mom always did this. We have mirrors. Mm -hmm. You can look at yourself, see what you look like, be comfortable with what you look like. And some people are like, oh, you're going to make her be conceited. You know, it's, it's, it's about this. You can be confident in who you are and be confident in what you look like and be happy with what you look like without putting someone else down. Right. So it's all about the conversations that you have. You have to talk to your children. You, you're not the prettiest person in the world. There are going to be people prettier than you, but being pretty is not what it's all about anyway. No. Right. And so these are all conversations that we have to have. So I think mm -hmm. to answer your question, the first thing we have to do is it's talk to them. I right. agree. So is this a, I don't know, I look at it, I think it's a case by case basis. I kind of feel like some, some little girls, 13, is still kitty for some, and for some, they're more mature than mm -hmm. others. I mean, like, my, my son is actually 13, but 
being around other 13 year olds, I see sometimes that he's not as mature as some of the other little boys or little girls yeah. that he's around. So I'm not sure if um, the makeup <laughs> thing should be a case by case feeling out from the parent of when do you feel like and what is the actual purpose of the child of the wearing makeup. the makeup? Yeah, like, right. What is, what, at that age, <clears throat> what is it portraying? What is it? I mean, you know, I, like, why is makeup considered so an adult thing versus a kid thing? Like, what what distinguishes it? Because as children, you get dolls and you paint their faces on, mm -hmm. you know, mannequin heads yeah. and whatever. So, I mean, still at that point, they're still playing in the makeup. So, I mean, at what point as a, a cause I, I have a son, I don't have a daughter. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't really understand that concept of that's too, too young to get your all eyebrows arched or too young for lashes. I've heard it, I've heard people say it, but as a, a as a man, I'm not sure men fully understand the concept of yeah it. so i mean i think we should kind of y'all should kind of coach the makeup for dummies as you know <laughs> say, you well know, we'll so. get into that we're going to actually touch on that because that's really really good things that you brought up but first we got to check in with our stylist hello world it's your boy h3 the groomer i'm on the southwest side of houston i'm gonna show you how we do it in h town hold it down Anytime my boy Lawrence come through the shop, I always want to make sure that I take good care of his healthy beard. Uh, you know, sometimes his wife get on me about his beard, but uh, I think it's important to make sure we promote a new hair growth for his beard. What are we doing today, Lawrence? Gonna get this beard right? Gonna get it right, man. <laughs> Help this beard get a little thicker. First thing I'm gonna do is lower him in the chair get the steam to blow into his beard because I want to open up his pores inside of his beard right here so it's going to soften it up. It's going to open up his pores so his beard can breathe a little bit. So I'm going to let this sit for about five minutes. Not five minutes, maybe like three minutes. Three minutes tops. And we're going to get this beard as soft as possible. Then after that, then we're going to exfoliate his beard. We're going to exfoliate it so we can promote new hair growth. That's the key of doing this beer wash. Hey y'all, this your girl Nikki, Nikki Styles Lady from Las Vegas, Nevada. Get ready, I'm about to show you that there is people in Vegas that can do hair. We all don't do $25 quick weaves that look like helmets. Get ready. <laughs> This is my girl Kia. She said she want a little bobbing on her little date tonight. She said she's gonna go out there and work it, slay all day, throw that hair around, let it catch the wind, get a little air, a little levitation in that joker. So we're gonna get her right. She might not be going to work tomorrow. She might be too cute to even go. So what you got going on tonight? What you getting your done for? Girl, I got a date and I'm trying to look my best. I'm okay. I'm gonna slay tonight. You trying to get you a husband? Hello? Maybe a wife? Girl, Who knows? Yes, or both. Okay. I'm trying to get it right tonight. All right. Okay, bring on my A game. Okay. <laughs> I know you're going to do it. But you know, that's my job. You know, got to slay you all day, every day. Okay, girl, because you the best in Vegas. Uh, Everybody loves it. Why, thank you. <laughs> so, um, so you brought me a closure. So I'm thinking about doing a little closure, quick weave, maybe a bob. Yeah, I was thinking a bob. You know, something blunt. Maybe Maybe something funky, do a little color, you yes. know, a little something. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the front part first. This is the most crucial, because you gotta make sure that your lace is sitting. Yes. And laying. Okay, because. Not bumpy. Right, because, yeah. I see y'all girls out here in Vegas looking scary, but yeah, we gonna, we gonna go on past I'm that. Okay. So I already kind of pre-customized this, so we just gonna fix this, see what it's looking like. It's kind of common now for the kids to get the, uh, the like, nappy top with the blend on the side. And that's basically what, what we're doing. We're doing a traditional blend, a blend fade. And we're going to keep the top, like, control chaos. Well, maybe getting a cut of hair, uh, um, I was talking to my cousin, he's a barber, Joe the barber here in the city, 
And um, I would after school go and see, watch him cut and talk to him. And he would always encourage me like, cuz you need to get a, you know, get in the barbering. And if you get in the barbering, as soon as you get out of school, I'll have a shop where you do a family shop. So I like that idea of being a, a, a owner, you know, a black owner. So that's what made me do it. I ended up going to uh, Marble College. And from there, I got out. My cousin kept his word. I kept mine. The week I graduated, uh, I was working in uh, the family shop right, out, right after uh, graduation. Hi, I'm Marcus Darling. Welcome to Atlanta. And don't forget, please save the dollar. Oh, you got to be grand in the ATL. Ugly just don't work here. All we do is pretty. <laughs> So what's up, this is my girl Kim. She's already been shampooed and molded and now I'm just gonna give her a little quick style. Um, she's a career girl, so she's always on the run, so she needs something that she can wear in and out. This is that cute girl here, look like bird feathers. It don't look like bird feathers, it ain't right. <laughs> Listen, man, you don't even understand. That hot comb made me a whole lot of money. But, you know, there are new and better ways to do things, and we have to move with the times, man. You know, I know stylists that still use that hot comb. And, you know, I guess that's okay for them, but I ain't really got time for hot comb because... You gotta, you know, keep heating that thing up. See this right here in my hand? $300 iron. But I keep it moving. I like irons. <laughs> As you can see, our stylists are, are doing what they do as usual. We're going to check in with them again to see the progress that they've made. Now, you brought up a very interesting point before we left last, uh -huh. talking about uh, the maturity and the case-by-case -case with, with kids and how do we say what's too young for makeup and why do we say what's too young for makeup. And I know you said you had some things to say about it. Yeah, my daughter, um, like you were saying earlier about the maturity level thing, my daughter, when I put her, when I look at her with her friends, She's pretty mature as far her on all her friends are with, as far as the intellect and things that they talk about, but none of them really wear makeup. None of them are into that like that. The thing that bothers me with that age group is filters. Um, Snapchat is really, really popular with 12, 13 year olds right now. And they always have to have a filter. And there are sometimes, um, there are little girls who think they're ugly. And what they do is they'll put a heart over their face or they'll put an emoji like a smiley emoji to just to kind of cover that up. And to me, that's like, I feel like that's the new makeup. And we should talk to our kids about that. I mean, I had to tell my daughter that one time. She has a, uh, she has a birthmark that she hates. Mm -hmm. And she took a picture and she put an emoji oh, on her head. Oh. And I'm like, why did you do that? You're beautiful with the kids pick on me. You got to be pretty gorgeous if right. all they can find wrong with you is, is a mole birthmark? on right. your neck, a birthmark on well, your neck. And we, I, you know, we need to stress that. that I think that's that, not um, cool. I, and I know that, like he said, it's a it's a case by case basis. Right. I know um, one young lady who her daughter, when she was 11, she would bring her into the salon and let her get full sewings and mm. a full face of makeup. And, you know, she had her own cell phone. And then a couple of months later, I find out this little girl is on the phone texting little boys about mm. sucking they pickle. Hold mm. on, baby. <laughs> right. Because when I was 11, the last thing I was thinking about was, was sucking, sucking a pickle. pickle. But when I was 11, the first thing I was thinking about was getting, was getting your pickle. Get your pickle. <laughs> but did y'all know? Who but did y'all know girls I, like? See, I knew, I knew girls, girls like, like that. Yeah, yeah. I knew and girls so like that. Not new. But in school, when I was in school, those girls were the whores. Those were the girls you didn't want to hang with because if you hung with them, it it was you got that stigma put on you as right. well. She hang with her, so birds of a feather, a feather flock together. Ain't no flocking over here, bitch. We not doing what she doing. Right. You know, and and so. But it's not. What I'm saying is though, is that's not anything new. That's no, it's not that's, anything that's, new at all. It's been around. It's it's not anything Since new at all. Seventeen hundred. <laughs> <been around. laughs> Pickle 
Vegetarian. So, so for you, for your Nick son, because I know bars. I have, I have an 11 year old son. I'm sorry, I have a 12 year old son. You said your son is 13, but some of his friends are more mature than he is. Is it, is it a thing that they're more mature or that they're managed? Because there's a difference between the two. Because I know my son, my friend's son is nine, and he's very managed. My son doesn't even like to hang with him. So, do you um, think your friend, your son's friends, are managed, or do you think they're mature? Um, some managed, some mature. Um, I mean, I guess I would have to see the situation and to, to mm. call it either way. Uh, I think uh, a lot of uh, little boys, um, they, I guess they, they're around older boys most of the time. Yeah. So at some point in their life, and they try to emulate the things that they do. And sometimes they get lost and some of it gets lost in translation as in as in why they're doing it like when know? they go to the barbershop with their daddy and the, the 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 chick come in with the tights in the barbershop and all the barbers laughing and looking and yeah and she's standing around and you know and the little boys i've been in that situation because i've worked and been the only female in a barbershop mm -hmm. and i see the little boys kind of you know some of them some of them like said little managed little boys they looking too but then some of them kind of have this look on their face like okay well should i do this because you know they doing that is right. that you know They're is it cool sure. should i should i should i not yeah, so i kind of feel know. like the barbershop um and i mean i've been around barbershops my whole life right. um so i kind of feel like in the way that and not not to say that women shouldn't really be in them but it's always going to be at our place i mean and, and so what you think about and, female barbers no nah, not not I'm you not, mean just I'm saying, coming like, to patronize yeah, like the patronize. male barbers. okay i mean i feel like a man should bring his son and i mean every case can't uh every man can't be there to bring their son right up, what have you but i just kind of just and being in the barber shop i do understand that it makes a woman feel but in the same breath I feel like some women do it for attention sometimes. Some women know they fine coming there with tights on. Oh yeah, that's always there. a barbershop hole now in oh, every city. Oh, they might like them. <laughs> it's in a barbershop, barbershop hole in every city. <laughs> every city. And every barbershop. Right. Um, every yeah, every barbershop got their own has personal a barbershop hole. hole that mm -hmm. comes in and wants to be seen and wants that attention right. and she's been We're we gonna talk about this word hole. That's the word that I actually do not like. What? We're gonna talk about, I don't like it at all. Mm -mm. We'll talk about that when we come back. We gotta check in with our stylist. Uh, this product is uh, it's my, my very own product. It's handcrafted. It's a uh, H3O beer wash solution. You can find this at uh, h3dimensions.com. Swipe this on here. I want to lather this up as much as much as possible. Because what I'm doing is I'm trying to remove all this dirt that's inside of his beard. This is how you promote a new hair. Uh, promote new hair growth with a healthy beard. You got to make sure you take care of it. So I usually just let this sit for about two minutes. For a good two minutes. Usually I have music playing. Usually I have uh usually I massage it. That's that's my other service I do, it's called a facial. So first thing I want to do is I just really want to make him feel more relaxed about the service. Alright, so now I wanna remove the steam, remove this hot towel. And removing all the dirt, releasing all ingrowing hairs. I'm going back, rubbing back and forth. So I can remove all the dirt and impurities and that's inside of the beard. The next thing I want to put is my beard oil, H3O beard oil. This is just a sample, but I haven't got it made yet, but it's coming. So the first thing I want to do is massage it into his beard. This keeps the skin moist, keeps the beard from flaking. Keep it from getting hard and dry and rough. This is gonna soften it up. Ready. So what I'm doing now is I'm fading. Um, I think I learned how to fade when I was 
I was watching a lot of YouTube and um, cause I was real strategic on how I wanted to cut hair. Like I wanted my face to be nice. I wanted everything. I'm, I'm like a perfectionist when it comes to like having things a certain way. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is just kind of make some markings just to make sure my adhesive is sitting properly. And you just wanna make sure it's not sitting too far. And I've already put it out my protecting and all that other good jazz. So I'm just gonna go straight into the adhesive. Make sure you use something to get this glue flat. Other than that, you're gonna be looking crazy. Yeah, like half of them out here in uh, Vegas. Well, you know, out here in Vegas, you know, they be half stepping a little bit, you know. Yeah. They need to get it together. And you just wanna make sure you're doing this real even. Get that glue dry. Make sure that glue is dry. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna put this on kind of sideways. So I'm actually gonna have, I don't know, you might have to move. I'm gonna make sure I bring it up and align it before I even decide to place it into the glue. Cause what happens is people go ahead and just rush, take your time, lay it directly into the glue. extra hair out of there. I'm just making sure it's directly in the glue. should just melt into the skin. You shouldn't see any lumps and bumps and all of that. Rat tail comb and really get down in there. Press it into the glue. Make sure this back is straight. Make sure you get all of that in there. Even underneath here, make sure you get that. Now all I'm gonna do is just go back. I see a little bit of extra lace I have, so I'm just gonna take my little small little shears, help them kind of nick whatever may be up. Looks like I got this joker pretty well on here. I'm gonna take a little bit of foundation, a little bit of powder. I'll take a little bit off just in case. I'm gonna start back here. And this is what melts that lace into your forehead. Put a little powder yes. up there. Take away the shine. Make sure you got it together. Well, what I want people to know is that this is a, a true art form. This is not, you know, a cookie cutter type of ordeal. You can't just put one guard on and that's a universal guard. And, you know, you, you, you really have to know what you're doing. You have to, you have to expand your mind and you have to expand your craft every day because you will always see changes in this industry, in this art industry. People think it's easy. They think this is easy. They think they can do it at home. I believe everybody should have their own personal barber. Did everybody hear me? Have their own personal barber. This is like, like the art form. Like this is like you're trying to tailor your own suit because you, you saw something on YouTube. It, it's just, it doesn't happen like that. You need years of experience to, to, to do different types of styles and you know yeah you want to be versatile so you want to get somebody who knows everything you know you might not you might know how to change your oil but you know how to change your transmission fluid and, you know so you, you get somebody that specializes in that so that's one misconception that this is easy all we could we make it look easy because we do it every day repetition in this industry i believe the possibilities are endless it's, it's based upon the individual's grind how hard are you willing to work i know barbers that make twenty thousand. i also know some barbers that make six figures 
And what separates the two is the grind. So let me break it down real quick. So $20,000, they just come to work. You're relying on somebody to advertise for you. Somebody that's making six figures, they're either owning their own shop, their own, they own their own product, and they're grinders. They go out and work and sell every day. So it's, it goes beyond cutting hair. What I love about my city, and it might sound crazy, is that some may say we are behind, like we're behind in, in times as far as like fashion and you know, certain haircut styles. So when I bring something to the city, they think it's new. So that's one good thing, you know, it, it, to me, I can work with it. I can work around that. Well, I believe that this city is, is, is endless. The possibility like we can you can whatever you want to be you can be here and if you make it here you make it out of Cincinnati one thing's for certain that you put the grind to the pedal like you you went out and you grind and you took it you had to have it so that's the one thing I like you have to grind nobody's gonna give you anything here and you have to work for everything time is money in this business yes it is I mean I cater to working class people. They ain't got time to sit in the salon for two hours. So I offer a service called Express. In and out, 45 minutes, an hour or less, you pay more. I don't push it on anybody, but I just, you know, put it out there for them to grab it. Some people can afford it, some people can't. Man, life is great here. It's land of opportunity. Black Hollywood. <laughs> great, man. I came here. I thought I would stay maybe two years. Now it's been close to 10 years. So, it's great, you know. It's a land of movers and shakers, you know. It's, it's, it's city enough for the people who, who need city, city. And it's country enough for us, you know, naturally country boys. I'm, I'm, I'm from a little small town in Louisiana, so I'm a country boy by nature. But I always had a city mentality. So Atlanta was perfect for me. People say that I have a very snooty clientele. So I cater to working class people, bosses, you know. So to ensure that I make boss money, I cater to boss people, you know. I cater to those people who don't mind giving me a hundred bucks to shampoo their hair. So you can say I make a hundred bucks an hour. Um, I have a celebrity clientele who I don't flash because you know, they're just regular people like us. They're just, you know, they're just entertainers. Um, but my prize clients are, you know, that lady that I met when I got here that trusted me with her hair and she didn't even know me. She's been with me since the first day that I got here. So those are the people that I truly value as clients. Because I know that they're gonna be here when no one else is. So yeah, I, I went to school for hair and uh, you know, I got a little bit from school, you know, it gave me a great foundation, but what I, um, what I have to go on is a natural God-given talent. You know, doing hair is, is, is a calling. You know, it's not just about making someone's hair look good, but it's, it's about making them feel good, you know, um, through doing hair. You know, I've learned that you get a lot of ladies to come into the salon they having a terrible day, they had a bad day at work, the husband ain't acting right, kids acting a fool. Come here, get their hair done, and it changed their entire mood. So I have a greater responsibility than just doing hair. You know, I'm, I'm changing lives. I'm changing lives. <laughs> All right, as you can see, our stylists are working it out. Look good. I'm excited about the final product. Of course, we'll get to that a little later. Now, before we broke the last time, uh, the word whore and whore Merry and ho was, uh, was, was thrown Happy out New Year times. <laughs> ho, ho, ho. Ho, ho, ho. Now, I personally have, have an issue with the word, but before I get into why I have an issue, I want, if y'all don't mind, give me a definition of what a hoe is. A hoe or a barbershop hoe? I'm going to talk a about, give me I'm a talk about give me the hoe. I'm going to talk about the, bar the, the barbershop hoe, since mm -hmm. I'm from, the, from the, the, the hair culture. The barbershop hoe is the female that comes to the barbershop with tights, little short shirts, stuff that's inappropriate for the set. And she's not there to do anything but get her eyebrows arched, 
None of the barbers in there really good at arching eyebrows, but she still goes there to get her eyebrows arched. And you know, walking around and flouncing around and things of that nature. So, you know, with what we were saying before about bringing your kids and guys going with their sons, you know, bringing their sons with them to the barbershop, it's kind of like, it was, it's almost like a rite of passage in our community, you know, for the, the little boys to come to the shop and, you know, with the dads. But then you see this stuff and you have to explain it to them. Nowadays, with the absence of fathers being in the uh, in the kids' life, it's almost as if the barbershop hoe has turned into the little boy's mothers mm -hmm. that come and bring them to the shop a lot. You know, a lot mm -hmm. of them come in there for that, and they bring right. the, they bring the child too. So why attach so, the word hoe to it though? Well, because they hoe it. The, but it's not but what all does of the hoe mean. She hoeing. What she, is, she, what is well, hoeing so, mean? Okay, so let me, let me well, touch on it. Okay, okay, go ahead. Hold on. Let me tell them what a hoe is. The hoe is the woman who. She wants the attention. For, she wants every man in the room's attention. Yeah. She wants to see which one of them she can take home with her. Which which one she can get to sleep with her to maybe throw a couple of dollars here or there because you know hoes always need forty dollars. Mm -hmm. She wants well, to. Fine. She yes. slept with. Hoes need <laughs> 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 she slept with. She slept with two or three of the barbers in there. If it's five barbers in the barber she shop, she slept with at least two of them, mm -hmm. maybe even three. You know that. So that's the hoe. You know what I'm saying? So she a hoe is. A, so a hoe is a person. Person who wants attention, it's a who wants woman. who attention, the woman money, at the well. and sleep with people. So that makes you a hoe. So that because not, 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 every not woman, with, because because that's, 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 that's definition. Not sleep that's with, almost every single woman. Not, but you no, don't go not just like that's every with, single woman. All these hoes because we are sexual people. But the barbershop is not the place for the hoes. But we're not even talking about barbershop. We're talking about in general because my my question is in general. It's not just so I'm not just about the barbershop. Just sleeping with people. Whatever definition we got, I said hoe. Whatever right. I say barbershop, right. I said hoe. You said a hoe. So wait, hold on. We're not talking about just sleeping with people. We're talking about sleeping with, if it's a circle of five people, she slept with three people in that one circle. We're talking about somebody who sleeps around. You saying she not a hoe, no she purpose. just friendly. I'm saying nah, she's a woman. She got a lot of love to give. She's a woman who is doing what she wants to do. She got a lot of love to give. She's again. a woman who's this doing what she wants to do. You right. You saying she's a woman. She definitely doing what she wants to do. I said she's a woman doing what she wants to do. What happens is when you try to define a word like hoe, like if you define hoe, it might hit her in the heart. Because something you said, she was like, well, I've been around five dudes and slept with two am i a hoe and she like but no i ain't know that was his cousin because we met on the on the different but, but, but why do we you have know to label somebody, somebody why do, but why do we feel that why do we feel the need to always label somebody when they choose to do things that's not harming you i like that they you don't that. agree with hold on, that you don't Nicole. agree don't with. act like you haven't everything got their place female who just grinds your gears she irks your spirit there's something about her because she's doing something well. in her you personal life that I don't agree with. Like no, I don't. No, nobody. Don't no, with, 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 no, with, with people doing their personal life does not bother me. Okay. It so, can't because if you if you're doing something in your personal life that but, does not affect me. But you stay away from those people. What am I? Right? What so am I? So what are you called? I have I have many on, so friends. I have many call? I have many friends who sleep around or who use men for money. Or aside from that, may so you got some dibble, and, dibble and dabble. I don't saying. know they're not hoes. <laughs> you call them hoes. I respect my friends and their right to do what they want to do with their personal yeah, life. Right. That's what right you know. I, that's what I do. I don't, don't call them hoes. She's, she's good. She's good. I respect my people and their right to do what you want to do. Making sure she remains friends with these hoes. Right no, here. they're not. Don't hoes. worry about they're, that. They're we not gonna hoes. roll through. I'm not labeling people. You do what you want. If you what you're doing is not affecting me and it's not harming me and it's not harming the world, you keep doing what you want to do. Don't let people label you and tell you you are lesser than or anything. Because right. as long as you are being a good person, she's fighting. For you be the hoes. best hoe you can you be. You be the best this, person we need you can a, be. You be the best hoe you can be. We need a whole month. Yeah, you <laughs> do that, that is why I have an issue with it. Because just like they can label you a hoe, I'm sure you can label all of us. Something else up here. There Biggest, is a whole, it's Biggest, a whole march. All kinds of stuff. The um, Amber Rose, the, the um, slut walk, yeah, and then that's, that's basically, and that's basically putting an end to the terms because these are terms, these are labels by people trying to say, oh, you are lesser than. And I have also an issue with it when it comes to younger children because we like to label your little girl. People are sexual in general. I'm not saying little girls need to be out there having sex. That's not what I'm saying. What I am saying is that people try to make. I was an 11 year old with a, a C cup breast. 
and I never felt good about my body because grown men and women walking around here trying to shame me because I developed something that I can't help that I developed. Yeah, yeah, and so, I you know, and I'm growing up thinking something wrong with me. I know what you're me. talking about because I had that thing when oh, I was Oh, my God. <laughs> Yeah, mom, you, they were like, what are you little, doing with that thing? With the little like, I can't help it. Jesus bless me. <laughs> I, all, I'm, all, I'm, all I'm saying is, is you know, I, I get it. You know, it's you want to have self-respect. You, yeah. you want to be respectful, whatever. But I do think because, you know, by that definition, you, you got successful millionaire hope. By that definition, oh, and, and, and right who, now. who are who are giving back to the community? Who are giving back right right to Now that don't just because you a hoe don't what mean. What you do is how you do it. If we, you gonna be a hoe? Keep, keep they, it on the let me, No, no. All right. So listen, they got drug dealing pastors. They got. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> no, they basically do. what I'm saying. They do. They what got demon pastors. What you do when you're off ain't got nothing to do with your goddamn job. You could be a hoe and be good at what you're doing. My thing is, Thank let's, y'all for let's, let's, let's drop them. these labels. We gotta check in with our stylists. We'll be back. All right, in, 2000, in 2008, um, that's when I picked up the pair of Clippers, man. And uh, I was going to Xavier University. If you don't know, you know, I graduated from Wiley. I got my master's degree. But, uh, man, the road, the road to success, man, it was tough for me though, because you know, when I was growing up, I lost my father when I was 15 years old. Um, I had to live with my sister. Um, I was pretty much picking up a lot of bad habits. You know, I started selling drugs in high school. And um, I think what woke me up is when I had went to jail and I was facing about, about five years in jail. And um, I think that right there kind of woke me up. So when I had my son, that's when, that's when I had to, I had to find my way. So what I did was I started cutting, started cutting hair in the house. Um, couldn't find no job because I was living in East Texas, so it was kind of hard to like even get a job. And um, so I finally found my break. I was able to find a good job, but um, I knew in my heart that's not what I wanted to do. I didn't want to work for nobody. I told myself that I wanted to go into barbering 110%, I'm gonna go hard with it. And I don't wanna work for nobody. And I went to barber school. I started going every day. I was there from, I mean, I was there from sun up to sundown. Uh, I was getting, I was pulling in about 60 hours, 60 hours a week in barber school. I was able to find my own way and be able to, to leave and you know, establish my own, establish my own. I got my own business, got my own car. You know, I'm living good. Um, I got two kids, Haley and Harold, um, which I love the most. And I think them two to keep me going every day. All right, so now that I got it faded, I'm about to go ahead and edge them up. Finish this bad boy up real quick. A lot of barbers won't admit it, but edging up is probably the most difficult part. This is the part where you get judged as a barber. But you got them sharp lines. Okay, so I'm gonna start the back now. And I got a little trick to speed this process up. I pre-glued most of my wefts as far as I could think I'm gonna use within a reasonable amount of time so I can speed this up. This is like my little homegrown trick. But you wanna make sure you're covering all of this cap because it is new. Whew. Okay. We're gonna lay this here. Don't worry if you get a little bit on their skin, it's glue, it's rubber, it'll come right on off. We're doing a blunt cut vibe, so we gonna do something not as thick. It's so funny because I do a lot of uh, wigs now, and that's what really got me interested in hair. My grandmother was a wig fanatic, and I counted her wigs one day, and she had like 
75 wigs in her room. <laughs> and they were all different colors, lengths, shapes. And she was like, baby, when in doubt, put on a hair hat. <laughs> so that started my whole fascination with hair and wigs and seeing my aunts and everybody always getting their hair done. I grew up in one of those families. They were beauty shop queens. And I got my tracks and stuff in. I'm gonna do a cut. Okay, I, right now I'm just creating a weight line for her bob. You wanna make sure it ain't like doing too much as far as like the unevenness because it's harder to clean up than it is to cut it right the first time. So it's pretty crucial. Make sure, make sure you're getting it pretty blunt. So everybody keeps asking me about this flat iron I'm using because it just puts this super like shine, silkiness to the hair. No matter what kind of hair it is, it can make anything feel good. I follow a couple people that use the flat iron, but they would use it backwards where you couldn't see the name or they would do something else, like scratch the name off or something like that. This must be a special flat iron. Right, trying to hide the name of it because they don't want people to know that they're using a $25 Remington flat iron from Walmart, but it's like it's the best awesome. flat iron ever. Right now we're going into the blend transition. We want to we want to get that airbrush type blend. So right now I, I used a one and a half guard to get it to this length, and now I'm using my one sixteenth guard to kind of freshen up and tighten up on some of the spots that I see. Uh, the, the neighborhood that I grew up in, I grew up out in Skyline. Some may say it's Mount Healthy, but we just called it Skyline. It was, um, it was a great neighborhood. There was a lot of blacks, um, a lot of unity out there, and it, it was, it was, it was good times. Those were good times. It was back in the '80s. I don't give my age, but it was back in the '80s, and it was just good times. I always had family around. If I didn't have family, we had neighbors, and our neighbors were family. They watched us in the morning, you know while our parents went to work. They watched the neighborhood. It was good times. People think haircuts are just haircuts. That's why you need a personal barber because you can talk, you can, you can kind of vent with your barber. And then at the end of that venting session, what happens is he gives you that mirror and you feel, you know, I have enough energy to take on my next challenge because I look that good. I look that great. So we play a big role. We play a big role in the community. Changing people's lives every day. We change a life every day. Every day we put these clippers to somebody's head, transform them, we're changing their life. This is the final stage. This is that, you know, chaos that we were talking about. So this is diamond products. This is what I use to sponge it. Sometimes, you know, I ain't having the greatest day, but you know, my, my, my first love really is not hair, it's really singing. So, uh, you know, I, I sing to my clients all the time. All the time. You should sing that song that I like most. Which one is that? Cause you know, I'm such a great singer, so. <laughs> what you want the me to say, girl? Song. What gospel song? God, see, you always want me to go to church. Why I gotta go to church? You a church for? What you want me to say? Show option, your choice. Um, 
one of my favorite songs. I sing it all the time. This is I lift my hands in total adoration unto you. For you reign upon the throne. For you are God and God alone. Because of you, my cloudy days are gone. And for you, I'll sing this song. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, now I'm just uh, polishing it up. Um, just taking away any of the little fly hairs that I don't want, but keeping it organic, letting the hair do what it naturally wants to do. I think um, in the industry right now, um, because wigs are like the hottest thing on the market right now, Everybody's making wigs. I have to go to wig work when I think of great hair. And I know this may sound like, you know, typical thing to say, but the Kardashians are killing it. You know, um, you know the guy that does their, their wig work, um, I'm very familiar with him and he does an awesome job. And um, I guess with seeing a lot of the wig work that's not so great, whenever I think about, you know, um, artists and people who work in the same industry as me, I have to give props. So you know who I'm speaking of, but you're doing an awesome job with the Kardashians. <laughs> we are having a great conversation. Uh, we've had some great styles that we've seen. We're going to see the final product in just a moment. Now we've discussed uh, labeling, we've discussed influences and maturity, especially within our youth. And, um, you know, my main thing as far as what, what young girls is concerned is, is making sure that they feel comfortable with who they are without any type of labeling, without feeling like they need any type of enhancements, without any of that, you know, because there's so much that these young girls see in the media every day that's trying to tell them, oh, you have to be like this or you have to be like that. Right. And I, I want, my main thing is, is individuality. Be good with what you are. Who and you are. another thing we should stress too, the same way we want them to be comfortable in their own skin and with what they look like, but at the same time, you don't want to get into a thing where you're shaming people mm -hmm. for wanting those things too. Right. I had to pull back a little bit because at first, you know, I was all on this, be natural, you don't need no weave, you don't need this, you don't need that. But I mean, hey, I do hair, we're in the hair industry, you know. I get tired of wearing my regular low haircut. You know, I might want to change it up and do something else. And I shouldn't feel like, oh, I'm, 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 I'm turning my back on the movement because I want to put some wavy long hair on my head, you know, that particular day. So we have to be careful to kind of, you know, make sure you're not doing too much and being too, you know, vigilant. Like you don't need it, you beautiful without. I mean, some of us do need a little enhancing. Ain't nothing wrong with it. You know, fixing up, putting a little, you know, glossing up something that's already beautiful. But the thing is, we have to enhance. It's called enhancing. Don't cover it up. Yeah, you, you don't know, be a, right? A whole another person. Right. Just you know, bring it out. But hey, it, some of the makeup wrong. artists be changing people. Listen, Everybody. man, some of the makeup artists take you from from um, Freddie Jackson to <laughs> Freddie Krueger. Freddie Krueger. <laughs> right. Well. No, they take you from Freddie Jackson to Beyonce, and it's like, wait a minute, baby, when you take that makeup off, hold on. Right. This ain't the same person that I met last night. Who did I just wake up but with? But if that makes that person feel good, though, right. yeah. by all means, you go, you know, go with it. Shame people for who they, who are. they are originally. Right. Yeah. Some, some people have skin conditions and things like that. We don't know why, you know, a lot of people wear what they wear because, you know, some people but are. I kind of just feel like it's hard for women to tell their young daughters don't do something that they doing. Now, I know it's right. all crazy, real. but it's hard for your daughter to equate why you gotta put makeup on and why you can't put makeup on and you got makeup on every day. You wear makeup every day. Why I can't wear makeup? Right. And so I think as a child looking at their mom, they're like, man, I'm on tripping. She wears every day. Like, right. You know. And that's why I try that's why I try to go places without makeup when I'm with my daughter. And I mean, you know, when when I'm putting it on, I let her put a little lip gloss on or something to make her feel like, oh, I got some 
pop pop on too. But uh, like you said, I tried to go places with you her. So your daughter is pop pop pop. Make your lips pop pop. Make your lips pop pop. I mean, we, you just brought it out. We ain't never heard pop pop. Make your lips pop pop. You heard? Because right. right. she, she look in the mirror and she go, my, uh, my lips pop pop pop. I'm like, yeah, they pop pop. Right. Uh, I like that. Pop. I mean, that's cool. That's a, that's a dope. Pop. That's a dope. And then we're in the street. She don't feel like it's pop pop, and she'll tell me she need a little bit more because you know I try to hit her with the news. So it won't show, and she'd be like, uh-uh, I need some color. Yeah, well, you know, like I say, um, y'all make sure y'all get these young girls right, because my son, he out here, and he, and he won't. <laughs> Is this a date so show? So we need right. Show. We also a need to teach our show. boys. We need to teach our boys. So pull your pants up. That, that that we don't belong to them, that just because something looks good doesn't mean they gotta touch it, that they are not wild animals, that they can control themselves. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. I mean, I hear what y'all yeah, say. I hear, I hear all y'all, all y'all mm -hmm. uh, complaints. But um, I'm just saying when we teach, we be talking about what we teaching our right, young girls. We you? also need to teach our, our sons right, so, certain things. So this is well. how it go. Y'all get cute, because mm -hmm. y'all won't. Man, no, not, not all the no, time. You, you no, might not want the man, but you time. want the attention that being beautiful brings. No, you want to feel good time, about yourself. Right? I get cute because I want to feel good. Give me all this. I put this shit on me at the You can feel good about yourself with just when whatever you got on. You can feel. If good. I had a long night and I got raccoon eyes, I don't want to go out in public with my raccoon eyes. I want to put a little concealer Why? on there because I want but, to. But you don't feel good about your raccoon eyes. No, when I see that, that is not the eyes God gave me. See what I'm saying? That's, no. eyes. that's, <laughs> eyes. that's the eyes I gave myself but that's for saying out all night. And that's not necessarily to attract someone because I play dress up at home. That's my favorite little pastime, what I do by myself. You take right. photo shoots and photo I, shoot. And then pictures nobody will ever see. And I put on makeup, no. I put hair on, clothes the whole night, and just in my room, have my little wine. Say, so, fellas, you know, fellas, you take them pictures ain't a woman, on. hold on. Sometimes. Well, ain't, no, <laughs> ain't no woman living took a a picture that ain't nobody else gonna see. A lie. That's not true. A lie. Then that what's the purpose true. of the goddamn picture? It's, it's for me. See anyway. It's for me. Yeah, all right. Listen, after I I done got a whole bunch of for me pictures before. <laughs> <laughs> for her or for you? And for us. <laughs> She took it for her, but then I saw it. Cause oh, okay. Cause y'all do slick stuff like, oh, look, and be showing your other pictures and it just and slide into it. Slide. Oh, you saw that? <laughs> and slide out. Don't play me like I'm stupid. Don't I know. Slide left, Pastor. Mm. Mm. What you but, doing? But, hey, every, don't oh. slide left. So every, mm. Everything isn't, isn't for attention. It's and it, you know, that's our main thing when it comes to that, especially with younger girls is, you know, the maturity level. And for younger boys, we just want everybody mm -hmm. to know, you know, there's a reason behind a lot of it. You have grown women who are insecure. You have grown women who, you know, feel like they aren't beautiful without makeup. You got grown, everything we're saying, we're trying mm -hmm. to teach our daughters, you got grown women who need some reinforcement on right. that mm -hmm. as well. I mean, listen, everybody, y'all, y'all say y'all want this, y'all say y'all want that. Be consistent with what y'all saying and doing. What? What? <laughs> Y'all inconsistent. Y'all How you feel? About, we we gonna we gonna, we gonna be, hit this in the final. I won't be cute for me and all. Go ahead, go ahead. We gonna hit we this because you just brought some wheat. Go ahead, let me get some water. Go ahead, go to commercial. He done brought some totally new into the situation. Ain't nobody inconsistent. Ain't nobody inconsistent. We have been saying the same thing. Oh, we oh, we doing this for us. For if us. you just so happen to like this, you got grown though. men who need some reinforcement right. too. Oh, Let's yeah. check out these final styles because I hear they looking real good on the other end of the camera. <laughs> All right, it's all done now. All right. Good, man? I'm good, bro. <laughs> good. Slick, slick. Hold on real quick. Put the final touches on it real quick. Real slick, real nice. Never think that you're doing too much to a haircut or style, whatever it is. You always want to make sure you want to put that touch on. See the beard, natural line. You see the glow from the H3 beard oil. I was still able to enhance it. Fresh edge, real nice. You turn around. Nice fade, real clean. 
Yeah, yeah. I don't know what your wife gonna do tomorrow, dog, but she might take off early seeing this one. <laughs> yeah, so this is a finished haircut, man. Here is the finished look. Miss Nakia is ready to go on her Hi, date, popping. I'm so I love the look. She slayed per usual, yes. and I'm scared to go to sleep tonight because I don't want it to mess up. But girl, that slay ain't gonna go nowhere. Okay. The whole little twirl here. Get just get into that close up of that hairline. This is how you slay a closure, slay. quick weave. Get it right. Yes, get it to the slay. Remember, this is just a five by five. It's not a frontal, so. It's good for people that just wanna try it and get their feet wet with adhesive and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's pretty much it. Uh, my barber's a very good barber. I think that on the rate to one to ten, I'll rate him about a ten. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. He always comes through. And he's always been a good barber since what? I was like five. Mm -hmm. And cut my hair since I was little. She's done, the done, done. Ready for whatever. What she doing tonight? She ain't gonna tell it. Look, she give me the lie. <laughs> she is ready. There it is. Now she ready to go kill him. And her hair is touchable. And she knows, she, you know, everybody likes for their hair to be soft. Especially that neck part. Turn around and look to that back part. Oh, she me. She mixed, y'all, she mixed. <laughs> black and black. She mixed with light skin black and dark skin black. When I sit in Marcus Allen's chair, I just trust him. I know that when I walk away that I'm gonna be fabulous and I'm gonna feel like a million dollars and ready to, for the Atlanta lifestyle. You had to feel good. That kid it does feel good. Cool see, it's off the chain. Wait. Those were some great styles, guys. I think that yes, uh, they, they, were. they really did it today. It was nice. Yep. It was really, really good. Today's show has been really, really interesting. We've had a, a lot of good conversation today. We've discussed so much. Hope you've learned a lot from us today, or at least gotten some good ideas about certain things. So um, what I want to touch on is, you know, at the end of the day, your ladies, your daughter is watching you. I know that my daughter is always watching me she wants to do whatever i do she is my own personal mini me so i'm very careful about what i show her and what i expose her to you want to be careful what you show your your daughters especially because if you're out here taking naked pictures and posting them on instagram and you out here thought and you i mean basically you're raising a thought you know so you want to be careful with what you show your daughters and what you put out there for your children to find yeah and um also ladies i want to let y'all know about y'all daughters that my son is watching too. So, um, <laughs> you know, if, if she out there putting on makeup, he like makeup, so he gonna be out there searching for the makeup and stuff, so, you know, y'all go ahead and put your baby girls up if they wearing that makeup a little early, cause um, mm -hmm. he out here on the prowl. Oh God. <laughs> Wow. See, that's the problem. Y'all want to be cute, but don't you don't nobody want nobody have, to want it. Don't nobody have time for that. Um, ladies, I know some of us have to, you know, do take on the male roles or the father and the mother's role, but when you do that, and you take your child to the barbershop, you know, have some respect about yourself. There's nothing wrong with being sexy. If you find, you find, you can't cover that up. I understand that. But like she said earlier, your daughter's watching you, your son is watching you. You don't want your son to grow up and ha have a woman that, you know, the woman that the whole of the barbershop that thoughts around to try to get the $2 and $10 off a haircut or a $2 haircut. Be mindful of how you do that. You know, just have some respect, cover it up and, you know, be a woman. 
Don't be a thousand. Yeah, is your coochie worth the coupon? Right. So before you worry about all these labels <gasps> being placed on you, ask uh -oh. yourself this. <laughs> What are you doing for society? What are you giving back? Are you a good person? Are you helping those around you? Ask yourself all that before you worry about any of the labels being placed on you. Are you hurting those around you? Do good by the world and good will come to you. Let your children see that. Let the children see the good you do and stop worrying about what people think about you. All right, it's time to see what we're gonna do next week. On Nicole Master. for president! <laughs> Nicole for president! Stop.